Hold it right there, or I will cut you down. You hear me, inmate? Do you hear me? Give him a chance. Kill him. Ah, to hell with protocol. Everything's gone to shit. Right now, I prefer a murdering scum fuck from the road or one of those monstrosities. We got a better chance to survive if we stick together. But you will do exactly what I say, or I will punch a hole in your sorry ass. Got it? Calm down, Fuck team. him. Don't let your when I see these bastards spawn, I prefer to stay in the dark. Go get a flashlight from the break room down the hall. And no funny stuff, or I will blow your head off. Comprende? Slayer. I first witnessed these creatures jumping out of the ground itself. Their heads were detached from their torsos, held aloft by hideous contraptions. Their limbs have been replaced by blades of the sharpest steel. To my eyes, they appear to be a manifestation of decapitation. Yet it seems improbable anyone ever had their head chopped off an abbot. I suppose uncarnate anything is possible. I have dubbed these monstrosities slayers. Suck my cock, you fucking monstrosity! Where the fuck are you? What's taking so long? Do it. Fucking do it! Just fucking kill me! Marksman. Based on the battery of rifles attached to its back and the blindfold around its head, this marksman appears to be the reincarnation of a military firing squad. Abbott was originally a POW camp during World War II, so it seems likely they would have had executions of that sort. Indeed, there are stories of a rogue colonel who was to be court-martialed but instead took his own life. Perhaps he is connected to these abominations. Oh God! Jesus, Mary, and Joseph! Man, what is this shit on the floor? Looks like blood, but it's, it's like it's breathing or something. The fuck? I grew up in Lafayette Car, and I tell you, I ain't never been so fucking scared. What kind of sick mutant was that thing? Fucking government! Fucking experiments! Fucking bullshit! Watch out! There's just more! One fuck yeah. Now those freaks stop coming, there's got to be some way to get these goddamn gates open. Mainliner. In the 1970s, lethal injection was introduced as the most humane means of state-sanctioned killing. To date, 25 such procedures have taken place in Abbott. This creature, I call him the Mainliner, 
appears to suffer with every move he makes. Perhaps the mixture of sodium pentothal, pancoronium bromide, and potassium chloride in his veins is not to his liking. The numerous needles jabbed into his body cannot help his disposition. Where's this dripping coming from? Yo, who that? <laughs> Nooseman. Not only is this nooseman dead from being hung by the neck, but he also appears to have had his skin removed. I wonder if these creatures are tied to the legendary story of the inmates who, outraged by the death of fellow workers in a quarry mining accident, hung in skinned five COs. The noosemen are more supernatural than many of their brethren ripping themselves straight out of the ceiling in some entirely impossible manner. Be quiet, they're listening. Don't get any closer, they can hear your footsteps. These burrowers are some of the most lethal creatures I have encountered, primarily due to their ability to spring forth from the ground itself and just as quickly resubmerge. They're closely tied to the very soil of Carnate, a theme among these monstrosities. Its appearance is of a human body tied up in a gunny sack and constrained by leather straps, with deadly steel chains attached to various locations. I believe they represent those buried alive. the waves? I swear it is the most hideous thing I have ever laid eyes upon. Remember, no good deed goes unpunished. Fire in the hole! They're all just fodder, I'm afraid, and there's an eternal supply. Wait! These festering creatures flaunt science with their every step. 
What's more, they are impervious to bullets and can only be blown up, burned, or if you are truly brave, hacked up with an axe. They seem to have some connection to an 18th century slave ship wrecked down the beach a ways. This way! Fester. Continually emerging from the slave ship, these are the festering creatures who foil my attempts to escape this confounded rock. Rats live within their flesh, writhing within it and then springing forth randomly. They appear to be a reincarnation, not of the slaves, for then they would be of darker skin tone, but instead of the slave traders. In this form, they are forced to live out again and again the fate they forced upon those hapless slaves. is too sick. An electrical storm is disrupting the equipment. these strange people in caves for so long? Are you the one I saw in the woods? How did it get this far? You're the one, aren't you? You must be You're here to take me away. Kill every last one of you! Die, the animals! Die! You! God damn it, what are the chances? I survived ten hours out here in this pit of hell, and I have to run into you? The scum who killed his own wife and children? Why, Pendale? Huh? Why you do it? You going to kill me too? Come on, it may kill me! I dare you! Kill him before he kills you. Wait, he's just confused. So it turns out you don't have the cojones to kill me when you have the chance. You fucking inmate. Go to hell, I am done with you. He'll shoot you in the back. Give him a reason to trust you. Inferno. From what I have witnessed, this manifestation of evil appears to have two distinct forms. The first, a young girl in Puritan dress, perhaps 13 years of age. This transforms into an altogether more disturbing flaming creature. Both clutch a small handmade doll. To my mind, there is no doubt that these creatures are tied to the three young girls who made witchcraft accusations in the late 1600s and led to the incendiary death of eleven innocents. Help us, please! What are you doing? Come on! Oh man, you're here. You gotta save us before Hargrave gets back. You gotta cut us down. You I gotta... don't think so. My prisoners never make it out alive. Time has come to wash the scum from the earth. This is my Armageddon. Lock it down! Inmates in the gallery, repeat. Inmates in the gallery. Submit. Submit. The fucking B-Block. Or just once he don't want to be on the flash!
see the show. My performance, uh, my performance on you, as it were, will be something I shall thoroughly enjoy. And I trust, so shall you. I am not certain we have been formally introduced. Talk, isn't it? Uh, my name is Killjoy, Dr. Killjoy, and I will be your alienist this fine evening. At last, you have made it to the climax of this fine performance. Let me introduce our newest player. This fascinating specimen is a creature of purest strength and rage, whose presence here must prove quite a conundrum to you. His resemblance to these other soulless beasts cannot be denied, but he is altogether harder to truly understand. But with the capabilities of my experimental device, I can bring about a rebirth of the spirit. Thus, we can shed light on this most unique situation. Why not come inside, and I shall show you? Not to fear, talk. I shall just rather to keep the rest of the world out. You see, we can't have it. This session is about you, and you alone. You and your various manifestations. you are. We all know that. Don't you see you're killing me? Your last best hope and all you can do is destroy it. Who do you think you are, you Neanderthalic barbarian? You cannot defeat me. I am one of the greats, one of the brightest stars in the sky. I'm not finished yet. You're more insane than I thought if you think so simple a trick will get you anywhere. No! My immortality! No! If that's the way you feel about your treatment, I cannot avoid the subject anymore. The time has come for a confrontation, a meeting of the minds, or perhaps I should say a meeting of the mind and the mindless. Go ahead, see if you can't reach out to your deepest fear. <coughs> you have made today is considerable. But remember, Dork, no matter what you do to accept yourself, there's no telling if someday the bell jar will not descend again. Dr. Killjoy One of Abbott's most persistent legends tells of Dr. Killjoy, the quite insane psychiatrist surgeon who ran an asylum on Carnate. Doing research of my own, I found that he did indeed exist, though which stories are true and which are fabrication is anyone's guess. Since the cataclysm, I have three times seen a surgeon formed of pure light, reminiscent of 16 millimeter film projection come to life. Could this be the fine doctor? This place wants you, Torque. It needs people like you. Once it gets a hold of you, it won't let you go, like it hasn't let me go. I've been here a damn long time, and it's sucked me dry. I pray it's almost done with me. It's sending something after you. It let you out for a bit, now it wants you back, deep inside. Deep inside where I've been for all these fucking years. Don't say I never did anything for you. Come join me in the dance hall. Oh 
no. It's back. It's starting again. It never stops. It just keeps burning. They won't let me go. <laughs> I think we got something in common. We know what love is. We know what it is to love a woman. You do anything for her. Am I right? And something else we got. We know what it is to lose it. Lose it all. To not be in control. Heart. 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 I can't even remember what I was in here for. Beating up some guy, whatever. I got screwed by the system. Fuck him. It fucked my life. They're as responsible for my old lady's dying as I am. Nobody wants the whole story. Just lock him up, throw away the key, and see him next life. I just wanna die! Just wanted to keep her safe. Couldn't protect her while I was on the inside. It ate me up. I lay awake at night thinking of what would happen to her. Any guy like me, any guy really loved his old lady would have done the same thing. Stop it! Stop it! God, so I couldn't take it anymore. So on that day, she came over for a conjugal and we fucked. I screwed her like I never had before. It was smooth, warm, rough, sweet. Best lay of our lives. I can't fucking take it! And then, she was laying there after. She looked so beautiful with a sheen of sweat on her. And I did. I cut her. Every last inch of her. All over. Scalding! Why won't it stop? Ah, it burns! Thank you. Horus. Many inmates break once inside Abbott, but none have snapped more extremely than Horus Gage, who, the tale goes, became convinced his wife wasn't safe without his protection and sliced her to ribbons during a conjugal visit. He ended up in the mercy chair, electrocuted by Abbott's then-executioner Hermes Hate. For years, inmates have said he haunts Abbott, and I believe I saw him ten minutes ago. I surely wish I had not. Sweet! This is it! We're set now. It's like a vault in here. Nothing can get in. Nothing? You say something? Yes. What was that? I think the dope's coming back. Breathe deep. <coughs> that smell! <coughs> What in the fuck's going on? That always feels good. He needed to go. He wasn't interesting enough. Not like you. You understand how it feels. He needed someone professional to pull the switch. A lot of eager sadists applied. But I was the only one who took the work seriously. So seriously I wanted to taste the gas myself. That's what Conant does, it brings out the killer inside. It's the perfect place for you and me. There's a difference between those that feel safest in the light and those that feel safest in the dark. Which are you, Torque? In the chamber, there is an intense light. Everything is visible. In the control room, the lights are off. You can't see anyone. No one knows you. I like that feeling. I'm here in the basement. 
basement of the lighthouse for a reason. It's the one place the beacon can't move. Ah, yes. That's it. Hermes. Since the Cataclysm, I have several times found myself mysteriously surrounded by noxious green fumes. I have fled in each case, and I think if I had not, I might not be alive to write this now. Within the gas, I have seen a humanoid who seemed to take great joy in the prospect of my death. Could this be Hermes, Abbott's resident executioner for several decades? If I recall... He took his own life in the gas chamber. Talk! My diagnosis is complete. Your cure is at hand. You might think my methods a bit unorthodox, but my results will speak for themselves. Ahead you will encounter something altogether unlike what you've seen before. But I have something that can help you. A device that can cure you, put your demons to rest. But only if it is sufficiently powered. And only if you are in your more, shall we say, primal form. Use this correctly and you cannot help but be cured. You do want to be cured, don't you talk? It's up to you now. wearing black clothes. He was like a shadow. I didn't see him, and then he was there. Oh, Daddy, I wish you could have been there. I know you would have kept us safe. us to get to you, didn't they? I forgive you, Dad. You couldn't keep us safe forever. I just wish I could have said goodbye.
You always had the worst luck, T. We didn't work out for so long. And when we got close, it all got taken away. You'd never hurt us. Not on purpose. No matter how angry you got at the world, you always loved me and the boys. Now's the time, T. You need to face down the anger you have inside. Remember, I'm right there with you. I only briefly saw this enormous creature a single time, near the docks. I cannot even begin to describe him, save for one thing. He seems to be quite literally connected to an inmate, the convicted killer, Tork. Incredible as it may sound, this creature appears to have a miniature version of Tork attached to him via a long umbilicus. Beyond that, I can only say that I view him as the most evil of all the creatures. A pure manifestation of fury and hatred. Left. 
Hold on! You're that guy Tork, ain't you? I heard about you in the news. I got a friend at the DA's office. Says the prosecutor on your case is being indicted. Says you probably get a new trial. Guess it's your lucky day, huh? Jesus. You look like you've really been through hell. Somebody's missing from this picture, T. I don't want us to ever be apart again. Love always, Carmen. <laughs>